sphere just turned two. I'm very excited to share with you that we come under the top five best performing multi-asset PMSs in India. And not only that, we also rank in the top 10 in terms of assets under management in India. But how did we become the best performing multi-asset PMS in India? Join us this Saturday where we will help you understand Sphere and why it is the only retirement product that you need. I really don't know because many of the people who have created wealth uh, may not have been technical people. They could have been people who have looked at fundamentals and bought. Very few, I mean, Rakesh stands out as an exception when he was good at speculating and investing. Very few people I have seen that way. I have seen people who are good at one, not good at the other. I mean, people have been great at portfolio creation, have no clue whether the market is going to go up or down today. They don't understand that. Somebody who can combine the two is Rakesh. There is no doubt about that. Rakesh could do it, but I do not know how many such people exist. So, to aspire to be like that is a tremendous skill, which means you have to trust your own fundamentals strongly and trust another guy who is very good in technical. If you can get that combination, I think it makes sense. So, you are saying that Amongst the armies of people who are trying to do this, few people will succeed. Yeah, yeah, That's obviously. Right. That is true in mostly in, uh, in portfolio wealth creation. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And what about uh, somebody choosing not to do this and saying that I will just go by fundamentals and create my own path and uh, buy, I will go through the pain and I will wait for the benefits. What should that person not do? Tell me what that person should not do because he is not having this certainty. You know? He is actually willing to soak in uncertainty and come out successful. What should he avoid so that his path of uh, wealth is good, he has the visibility and he is journeying along smoothly? So first of all, he should talk only to people who are like him, maybe 10-15 years ahead of him in the game, who have done it and who will not judge him. Because if he looks to people his own age, maybe they are also 27, 28 and they are trying to do this path, they don't know the path, they will misguide him or they will judge him. Saying, Are this guy is an idiot, he keeps on buying the share even though it's going down, it's going up, he keeps buying, his IRR is below the sensex, so what he is doing is a waste of time. So somebody could be that line, but this could be a typical hockey stick kind of a thing, come down like this and go up like this. So he has to have conviction in his own research and he should help uh, seek the help of somebody senior who has done it and say this is what I am doing, is this right and have the conviction to hold on. This is very difficult to find conviction. There are people, I see young boys and girls who have that conviction saying look this money I can sink, this company I like so I will keep buying at these prices. There are such boys and girls, they are doing it. But can everybody do it? Because if your own house there is pressure. If your mother, father, somebody sees your portfolio and say, look, you're making a mess, it's going to be very difficult. So, I say this even to people doing CA, don't be in the social media. Somebody will judge you. Somebody will say, oh, you failed. See, I told you, you should have studied better. Not everybody is able to take that feedback. Somebody who has never failed, fails in CA for the first time, so saying, cannot take that feedback. You talk to. Choose the people you talk to, choose the people from whom you will listen. I mean, do a Guru Shishya, uh, Guru Shishya Parampara where you go sit as feet and learn. Keep learning and then grow. A lot of young people want to be Guru at that young age itself. No, they want to have following, people listening to them. That seems to be the order of the day today. Do you think that they will not be able to see the path to wealth or what? what is wrong in that? I am just trying to ask you. No nothing, is, no, nothing is wrong. But the question is all these wealth seekers are actually not seeking wealth through the equity route. They are seeking through the advertising route. They are promoting a product. They are getting followers. They are doing some kind of a uh, training, trading, etc. And creating wealth. So honestly, have they created wealth by buying Bitcoin and selling or things? No. We don't know. We just don't know. So can SEBI act on that? Again, we don't know. So somebody comes and says, I did this. It is an unaudited thing. So I don't even know whether he is how he has made money. So, if I do training and make money and I say actually I am making money in uh, trading, you will not know the difference. But see, in this get rich quick era where you are seeing stories of somebody who did a startup and went to a unicorn in some 8 years, 5 years, everybody wants to achieve results very fast. Somebody young wants to only choose a vocation where he can achieve results very fast. 
trading seems to be that occasion. Most of us who have seen the markets long enough don't subscribe to that view. We don't agree so easily to that view. So for us, uh, it's anything but trading. That's how we think because most people have failed, known to us. But that's where the bulk of the young population is making an effort to succeed. They actually believe that the path to wealth is through trading. Why has this happened? It's because they are seeing others whom they believe have become rich through trading based on claims. So you have uh, this behavioral issue where people believe something which is not true and aspire to be what they believe in. Do you think such paths can lead to wealth at least for a few people or it's going to take most people down the tube? Uh, the delivery based business in India or rather the, after the total trade in value 99.4 is derivatives. It is 70% in US. Right? So the question is are all this 99.4% going to make money? The answer is no. SEBI has time and again said 90% of these people lose money. So, the best case is 9% make money. At best, which I think is wrong. It's exaggerated. That's exaggerated. And how much? And maybe that's 100% exaggerated or 90% exaggerated. So, maybe 1%, 2% make money. What is, why would I, it's like, you know, saying out of 90 people who cross the road, out of 100 people who cross the road, 90 are killed in a, by a truck. Why would you cross there? Won't you take a car from this side, go and turn and get off on the other side? Why would you take so much? The odds are terribly against you. Once in a while you will make money. Unfortunately, most of them do not know the IRR on their portfolios. They will pick up one share and say, look, I bought where this for where yeah. they won. Yeah. And they will talk about success. it. Yeah. And if you are not writing down what you are doing, if you are not measuring, if you are not journaling your thoughts and not checking your p and or your IRR on each script, if you do not know the IRR on your portfolio, you are lying to yourself. And that's the worst thing you can do. Once you have reached a significant milestone in your path to wealth, what do you think a person should focus most upon? Like somebody has reached 10 lakhs or 1 crore in his portfolio. What should be his topmost priority? Because he needs to go to the next place, right? What should he focus upon to ensure that he doesn't slip back and moves forward? I have been very lucky in finding friends who could critic what I did and I knew honestly that he was criticizing based on what I was doing and said this you need to sell, this you need to right size, I mean Narain is the person from where I learned portfolio sizing, right. So these are all things which you have to learn from friends or YouTube channels or books or whatever. Finding one good guide in uh, equity who, is, who has actually done that is an amazing asset which you can do. So I think that your journaling will help, reading will help, watching good YouTube videos, there are tons of it and realizing that now you need to also uh, diversify to protect, right? Lot of wealth creation happens with a very narrow portfolio, single portfolio. Like a Mukesh Ambani's wealth creation vehicle is Reliance. For Azim Premji, it is Wipro. That is where the wealth creation has happened. But having created that wealth, you will need to diversify to protect it. So those are things which you have to learn. Now it is not just equity trading. The whole financial thinking because by the time you have achieved one of your uh, uh, milestones, it is a time when your family could be in place. So whether you have adequate insurance, whether you have adequate medical insurance, life insurance, whether your job is so good, you all you those things. The, stabilizing your ecosystem. Absolutely. So that Absolutely. you prepare for the next wave. Of Correct. So don't, don't play it like a sport. Don't play, see. Or don't play it like you are a cowboy. No, earlier you are nothing at risk. You could afford to lose 5,000 rupees. That's yeah. all you was there. But today if you have 10 lakhs or 20 lakhs or 1 crore, it's a big lose. amount. You can't afford to, you can't go back and start from zero. You may not have that energy, the mental strength to do it. So now you need to first put some protection. Maybe you should have some guilt investments or things like that, which you know can't go to zero and speculate with the balance. So that is what you have to do. How about goal setting? 
have you ever said that okay now i am 1 crore next i want to be 10 crores or something like that is have you tried your hand at it or have you seen it work somewhere any thoughts on uh, setting aspiration because a lot of young people have numerical aspiration i am here i want to be there at this time so they they have a timeline and they have a milestone uh, modern younger people seem to think this way what are your thoughts on both these things i've written a book on goal setting i can't go back and say you don't need to do goal setting goal setting is easier when these are uh, physically achievable goals you say i want to buy a car i want to make a foreign trip i want to buy a house this is easier than saying i want to create wealth for myself because there you don't have a number you just no, say okay you have a number. let's say i am at 1 crore i say i want to go to 10 crores so see whether first of all uh, i think god gives everybody enough opportunity to achieve reasonable goals so somebody who says i want to go from 1 crore to 100 crores needs to have the path very clearly what he will do now if he says for this i need an irr of 36% it's not going to happen unless he's in his own business and he gets a valuation then things like that just with investing you don't make money actually you don't make money with investing investing is a place where the value is realized you make money because some entrepreneur is uh, slogging is uh, work, working is butt out going doing sales etc and is listing and the market is saying yes your company is worth so much you are going to participate in that so understanding the process of wealth creation all that is necessary so if you have a goal find out whether your goal is reasonable and whether you are willing to put in that kind of an effort to achieve it if you are not i mean a buffett or a mukesh ambani are full time investors you want the achievements of buffett you have to put the hard work of buffett you have to uh, have the achievements of virat kohli you have to put that many hours in the nets don't just see the success and say i want it you won't get it unless you put in, i mean rakesh junjunwala or vallabh bansali were extremely good at understanding numbers understand that they are chartered accountants who have done that articles they have done, you know all that process you can't ignore the process and say i want the rewards it's not going to happen you look at the process so you have to do the process so you are saying don't have such milestones you focus on your process intensely keep improving it and you won't have to worry about reaching that milestone in reasonable time reasonable yeah. time yeah and reasonable goals reasonable milestone 36% in 3 years i want this to happen that won't happen in 2 years i want my money to double these things won't happen in your whole life what if it doubles how do you deal with it so suppose you let's say you are lucky like you know you had people who done that in these 3 uh, years subra now should they say that okay i have done this now i'm going to do it again or say that okay maybe this was luck uh, maybe i should do it differently which is the better approach today no i had 10 lakhs out of which 5 lakhs of my portfolio doubled in 2 years so now i have 15 lakhs do i want to risk the whole 15 lakhs and think it will become 30 lakhs in 2 years or do i want to say no now let me protect 10 lakhs i'll again you know invest 5 lakhs into a scheme like this will i say i always had a great thing at picking multi baggers so 25% of my portfolio will always be towards picking multi baggers the remaining 75% will be for compounders right i need to do a combination of all this i cannot just say i will always find multi baggers so all my money will always be in multi baggers and then i will get uh, 36% return it may not happen for the complete portfolio it may happen with part of your portfolio and take anybody's portfolio including rakesh's portfolio he would have bought 60 70 maybe 100 companies in his life child gone wrong with 10 or 12 got out of 50 60 and really made major 90% of his money or 70% of his money in 6 7 shares this will happen in every portfolio okay so, so you must make sure that you don't let go of that seven ha ah, those seven when to sell how much to sell but if it is over getting oversized in your portfolio then you have to cut your losses see all these things look at like contradiction with each other within all this to stand strong i mean i can say you i should have ear to the ground and say don't listen to rumors now these are again at conflict right with all this mess how to come out is an art so there is a science where the art takes over from science i mean you talk to any of the fund managers they'll say portfolio sizing is 70% science and 30% art right so combining all this and doing is not going to be easy 
most importantly, like you and I do, we should have fun doing this. Correct. If it is important. painful for you, yeah. you will not do it. No, not you will give it. up. You will say, I have enough, let me just go and sleep. Yeah. You enjoy the process, therefore you do it. So, start enjoying the process of reading about it, uh, talking about it, making videos or talking to others, creating groups and talking in other places, writing about it. That In that whole process, you will also create yeah, wealth. So, you are putting the journey above uh, its speed or uh, the destination. You are saying, enjoy the way you go about it. Enjoy your travel with your investments and don't stress yourself that you are going too slow or too fast or you have not reached a particular place. Speed is not important, direction is. Okay. Then you meet other fund managers, ask them what they do, ask them what mistakes they made. You know, from there so you the learn. So the primary thing in your quest to create a wealth path is to be directionally right most of the time. Yes. Most of the time. Yes. You can't be right all the time. But if you are right most of the time, you are still... stationary, it's okay. As long as directionally you are facing the right. <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good one. Yeah. So, the anxiety which people are having today after these three years of good performance is not necessary. And one more thing I feel in equity investing, you need a lot of insurance. So, education is an insurance against being unemployed. Because from your age of 32 to 38, if you are unemployed, or 32 to 34, you are unemployed, there is a chance that you will want to touch your equity portfolio. If, if there is a death in the family and you need to touch your equity portfolio, especially at a time when you are doing badly, it is a, it's a huge damage. So, you need life insurance. Somebody falls ill and you touch money from your equity portfolio, so you need medical insurance. So, you need an education, you need all these kind of uh, modes, which are ecosystem which you have created, uh, a family which understands what you are doing, your wife who participates with you in what she is doing, even if she is not part of the journey, she understanding what you do, your children understanding, your parents and all this eco, creating that ecosystem is also your job. If nobody has done it in your family, it is your job to create that. After you do this, explaining to people and also taking money out to enjoy. Because the family should feel, yes, you are creating wealth and you are enjoying it also. It is not that, oh, I have reached 100 crores, I have never enjoyed myself. You don't want to do that. You want to do that whole process. Then the family participates, everybody understands that this is how family wealth is created. Like the process, then you can enjoy your equity. Otherwise, you have created equity for no use. So, you are saying it is like a group tour. Or a family pilgrimage, it is a going on a long journey yes. and at the end of the day, the intangibles matter more and don't have too much of expectation setting and don't be tight on your milestones because you could do better than that also sometimes. Yeah. Most of the time actually you end up doing better than what you expect and yet after doing better, you want to set more aggressive milestones and you want to become a faster version of what you have already uh, accomplished, which itself is a blessing. So, when you do that, you start setting yourself up for something which is not right. So, generally, what I have seen is when people do too well, they stretch themselves in the wrong direction. So, directionally also wrong, speed also wrong and everything goes wrong. So, everything that should, yeah, then you don't enjoy anything. So, this is generally what happens to people who are very successful in a short burst of time in the equity market. This has been my experience, what I observed. And uh, today, as we speak, after these three years, 20 to 23, a lot of people seem to be traveling in that boat. Probably they need to find some place where they get off that boat and get on to another boat and go on a different path, which will help them create wealth in a more, uh, re in a more relaxed way and in a way which uh, makes them enjoy the journey. Yeah, change of, change of instruments. Like if you want to go to New York and you are sitting in say Madurai, you take a very nice Mercedes and you reach uh, Minambakam airport. You cannot say this vehicle is so nice, I want to go to New York in this. You have to change to an aircraft to go. Right? So, similarly, your instruments will change. You will, your ability to take risk may have increased, but your need to take risk may have gone away. So, you don't need to take risk if you don't enjoy the process. So, find out whether you need to take risk, you have the ability to take risk, whether you have the desire to take risk. Suppose you are 55 and you, your children are uh, amazingly successful by that time. 
your ability to take risk dramatically goes up. Correct. So, you know, do an evaluation of your journey every few years, see what you are enjoying, what you want to do, what you don't want to do and continue your wealth creation process. I think, Sham, there is one more problem. Unfortunately, we only measure money wealth. Correct. Because I can ask you how much is your how net worth? Your how much is your net worth? I cannot ask you how much is your health? You don't have an answer. Then I get an answer from a 40 year old saying, I don't have diabetes, I don't have sugar, uh, I don't have blood pressure, so I'm healthy. This is like saying I'm 50 years of age and I have no debt, so I'm rich. You're not. You're not created well. So there is no health scorecard. How good is your reputation is not measured. None of these things you do. You have only cash. You have only you know money. That's not wealth. So, I mean, Abdul Kalam, um, Abdul Kalam was not judged on how much wealth he had. Correct. Deepak Parekh is not judged on how much wealth he had. There are many people much richer, but his reputation wealth is huge. Narain's reputation wealth is huge. So you could have reputation wealth, people asking you questions in your field, coming back to you and saying, oh, this guy is a genius or somebody who can recite the Vedas. So from what you're saying, uh, somebody who is on the path to creating wealth must be very observant of the people around him in his own circle. Who are working more on this reputation than on creating money, then they will get clues or cues on what they should do. So essentially it's about creating an ecosystem, growing in that ecosystem, evolving by learning, observing what people in your own ecosystem do better, expanding your ecosystem constantly so that there are newer people also who do newer things and uh, not holding yourself to financial milestones and tight timelines that yeah. essentially will help you create your own path to wealth. Thank you Subra for this wonderful conversation. I am sure uh, a lot of points which we have touched will be useful to all of us and uh, because we keep revisiting this every time we have reached a place sooner than we hope to, we probably also need to rethink and go back to the basics and then again start the next journey and as you said. Because you have had a great journey in one way of investing, it doesn't mean that the same vehicle will take you further in life. That's a very, very important take out from this conversation. Thank you very much for the lovely conversation.